Warning, you've never seen anything like this before. The following program is intended for mature audiences. This program contains alcohol and strong language. Viewer discretion is advised. Big trips, bitch, don't let it take you. Yep, yep. I'm due for a big case, all you bitches say. I'm first class, take a nigga fully paid. We want trips, twice and private jets. And we're land, no respect, no sex. Nope. And I got my purse to bartender too. She's top notch, she fit in with the crew. It's actually a two-for-one special, boo. Oops, I forgot, that's my job for a chill. Wrestle, wrestle, everywhere I go. Find when it dies, she keep it on the low. I wear plain hats, as eyes you can see. You need mama strong, get her icy. Ooh, you ain't saying shit, you're acting spicy. <laughs> Welcome to Ambrose World, the official bartending show where getting lit is it because this is as raw and unscripted as it's going to get. I have special guest Samara Curtis with me today, your favorite content creator, aka the one that niggas love to shoot their shot with. How are you, my girl? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> good. Look, I'm sliding around and stuff, y'all. <laughs> so, girl, I need to know. First things first, have you sent an invoice yet? To the men shooting their shot in your booking email? I need to. I have not, but I need to. Like, as of two days ago, I should have been sending them invoices from the holiday DMs they've been sending and getting real reckless. Yo, Samara, that kills me. Girl, they be on your top. Like, how do you deal with this? Um, I ignore most of them, honestly. Yeah. I ignore a lot of them. Uh, some of them I'll entertain, but majority of them I don't even open the messages, to yeah, be honest. I figured... The guys that you have already curved in the DM, are they, like, newcomers? Or are these, like, new bold people coming in? <laughs> um, it's a mix. There are some people that have been talking to themselves since, like, 2018. <laughs> the and then there's some newcomers. There's some people who don't understand, like, I don't respond to DMs. And they're, like, very um, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed to the DMs. And there's some type of hope and there's really none. So they just sit there and start talking to themselves. Y'all, I, I can't even get over it, girl. Like, all right, so y'all know I'm going straight in on her. But, guys, y'all already know I had to do jacuzzi thing for Samara. You know, every guest gets their own thing. And y'all know we see Samara out here, out the country, starting them <laughs> swimsuits and all her outfits. So I had to get her in the hot tub. We got our furs on in our bikinis, honey. So who else going to give it to you? But <laughs> first things first, would you prefer a broke, lo loyal man or a rich cheater. I'm really big into loyalty, yeah, but um, I think so. also at the same time, like I don't need someone to take care of me, but that'd be nice. Um, I would honestly say I'd take someone who's broken loyal. Loyalty means a lot to me. There's a lot of things that goes on in this world, and I'd rather have someone being honest. Yeah, because I'm making money, so I mean right. I can kind of do it for both of us for a little bit. But yeah, a cheater. I've been there, done that. I, it it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. And I'm not going through that again. Yeah, for a little bit. How long was a little bit, though? Um, I'm giving you, like, two months. Okay. Like, I'll show you I have a job. I can sustain some bills. But at the same time, you're not going to just be, like, playing video games every day thinking I'm yeah. affording our lifestyle. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> giving it two months. I'm supposed to say, nope, you got to come in and have a job on site for her. <laughs> How do you determine that you're going to give someone a chance when they hit you up in the DM um, off their profile? I'm big off of persistency, like... There's a difference between being persistent and, like, creepy in the DMs and mm -hmm. being persistent and, like, wanting to have an outcome. So there is, like, someone who's kind of been persistent recently. So I'm like, okay, let me entertain that. We exchange yeah. numbers. They're not a creep. I got kind of the verification from other people more. So that's what I go off of. Like, I'll get kind of the validation from friends if we have mutual friends. If we don't have any mutual friends or connections where I can reach out, then I'll kind of just go out on a whim and try it. But you have a very short time for that kind of trial and error period subscription time. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, so you brought up friends. So you will, like, bring it up to your friends, like, hey, this person's in my DM. What's up? Oh, yeah. I think I'm going to try to, like, give it a shot. We're going to date. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. I, tell my girls I don't do day. that shit. I don't oh, yeah. know. I don't know. I'm so, like secretive like mm, i don't know i don't feel like i want to say anything well like, i'm like if i'm going out with the person i'm telling my girls if it's like just us texting back and forth i'm yeah. not gonna be like oh i'm talking to someone new because that could change next week so right. i'm not gonna get my girls involved with everything but if it's been like mm, a month or two and we're like still talking dming and stuff like that then i'll let my girls know because clearly it may be going somewhere yeah and then people are also weird as hell in this world and i don't want to like get killed so that's yeah, where yeah. my head goes <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm definitely you with that Samara, as you guys already know, she went viral for a date, going on a date, and she gifted her date with a cigar, right? Yes. 
we got to talk about this. She literally was blown up on the rail. They all were talking about it. How was that? I was just confused. I was honestly, <laughs> I was honestly confused for the whole blow up of the start to finish because the gift was free. Yeah. I was communicating with this man so I understood what he liked and people just didn't realize I was doing a nice gesture like we all as well I know women that I know we look for flowers or little gestures mm-hmm. on our first date to show like a man is looking for us so like why can't we do the same not saying it has to be every time but if you're talking to someone and understanding okay they are very into baseball cards or they're very into old whiskeys or something but yeah. and you have access to that why not show your affection or something in that means in that way like my love languages are words of affirmation and gift giving so i show my love by giving gifts i love giving things because i'm not an acts of service person i'm not going to wash your dishes and things like that Mm -hmm. but in my way is gift giving so i knew that this this man at the time was an avid cigar smoker he enjoyed them my dad has a big ass collection i'm like let me just go down there and ask him which is the cheapest one which one don't you mind me taking and i just took that to our to our date and people didn't realize this man planned a full four to five hour date in downtown baltimore starting from cocktails to dinner to a record store to late night happy hour cocktails so i'm like y'all didn't see the whole money part that he put in but y'all were so focused on oh me going out of my way to gift a man something because it's out of the norm but nowadays, like, sometimes you have to be out of the norm to stand out because yep. every girl is kind of doing the same thing or looking the same or putting themselves out there. So it's like, what are you doing to stand out? Not saying we have to stand out, but right. that's my personality. I like to be out. I like to be loud, showy. Mm-hmm. So, yes, I'm going to give the man I like a gift because I'm going to show you, oh, this how yes. this how the world is if you come to my side. I'm, I'm catering to you. I like to give gifts. I like to spoil my man. So yes. here's a little sample of what could potentially be. And it didn't cost me not a damn thing. Girl, it was a damn cigar. Like people were literally losing their mm-hmm. mind. They were acting like I met, I, I bought this man a, a diamond Range watch Rover or a something. Diamond watch. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is like nuts. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a whirlwind. It was fun. I got to like profit off of it and kind of take my little definitely and yes. To the next level. So there were benefits from it, but just the way people reacted, especially like black people, it was very disheartening yeah. to see a lot of women more so chastising me for what I did as if like our black men aren't worth it and this black man to me at that time he was worth it he was like putting me at the forefront reaching out to me every morning sending me little things at work so it's like people didn't want to take the time out to know what he was doing they were so Mm -hmm. focused on oh you went out of your way to give a man you didn't know anything and it's like they called me a pick me and I was like I mean if if you want to put a label on it fine but at the end of the day I was happy you're on your couch miserable as hell probably looking at what miserable. I'm doing posting my life enjoying yeah. my life and even though we aren't together still to this day like mm-hmm. he's still a cool guy my mutual friends still work with him we saw each other at a little cookout thing over the summer yeah. said hello and kept it moving like there's no hard feelings I learned something from that I no longer put my business with men out there like right. that but that's a part of my personality so it's something I learned from but I had a good time with that little experience I love that. <laughs> Did he love that? Like, was oh, that the first time yeah. he ever got something, like, gifted to him? Um, I don't know if it was the first time he got something gifted, but I would definitely say it's the first time I think he had that type of exposure also put on him. So he was able to benefit from it, right. I think, as well. Look at that, Samara. <laughs> Not you putting everybody on. Putting That's everybody right. on. <laughs> you know how when people usually break up, it's always beef. Do you have beef with any of your exes? Um, Are you guys all so cool? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm pretty mutual with all my exes. One of them That's reached out to me the other week to come speak to, at his school that he works at about, like, entrepreneurship. Another one reached out to me two days before Thanksgiving, asked him if I could make a pasta salad for his, like, friends giving. So I'm like, I don't have bad blood with my exes. We may have ended on bad terms, but, yeah. like, over time, I'm mature enough to be like, we each messed up in this relationship right. somehow. But, like, we're able to move on. They're all in good relationships. They respect me and what I'm doing. So, yeah, I don't have bad blood unless... I don't know of an ex that got bad blood with me, but on this side, I think I think we're I think we're good. Dang y'all, Samira grown, grown. She's grown. <laughs> <laughs> You're single, right? Yes. You're living life. We all see. You're kid free. Yes. When dating, are kids a deal breaker for you? At this moment, yes. I dated yeah. multiple men with kids. I've tried it, so I can say I've been there. I've done that. Some of them, some of the situations worked out perfectly, and over time, it just was mutual differences. Some of them from the jump, the baby moms were like, oh, she's not sticking around for long. It just made it difficult. Mm -hmm. So I know at this point in time, like, where I want my life to go, 
I kind of want to have someone's first child. I want to be their first mm-hmm. wife. So I realized the child thing isn't for me per se. It may be for someone else. I know people in my close circle friends that have great relationships with people who have kids and they're a blended family, which I commend them. And I ask them questions every day, how that works, how they're able to get through there being another person in the picture for life. And for me, that it just doesn't work because I went through a lot of those situations and it was just too many negative outcomes. So now I'm trying something different. So yes, a kid's for me is a deal breaker, unfortunately. Yeah. And Samara, you know, we don't come across a lot of women like you. So there's going to be a lot of jealousy out here. I mean, mean, it is what it is. You know? (laughs) All right. So we're about to get into our tipsy part of the interview. So kudos to the men with no kids out here. Samara kidless too. So... Y'all might can shoot y'all shot. It depends what y'all got going on for yourself. So we gonna take a shot to that. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. So Samir, I've known you forever. Yeah. Why do I feel like you don't get drunk? I feel like you get conservative drunk. I think it came from the nine plus years of bartending. I used okay. to, be able to drink like a bottle of Hennessy nasty, like within the first couple hours of work. Yeah, right. But now, yeah. like, I, me and my bartender, oh, we would get messed up, but we were still functioning. Our money was still yeah, right yeah. at night, like. But we knew how to have a good time and make money off of drinking as well. Like we wouldn't drink unless a man was buying our drink. So like, there was a benefit. Nice. But now, I don't think my body processes alcohol the same since I hit like thirty. So mm-hmm. I know, like, I have a three shot limit. If it's mixed drinks, I have like to drink with mm-hmm. so I know how I react because that next morning I hate feeling hung- I hate the hungover That's feeling and I can't do it so yes I don't get messed up wasted anymore but I've had my prime time when I ran through DC and Baltimore where I was like belligerently yes. fun drunk are you the lightweight friend or are you the friend that announces this shot o'clock every couple minutes oh I'm the shot o'clock friend if you look at my are Instagram you? oh yes I'm the one who's like this bottle has not been touched. This bottle needs to be cracked right now. We've landed. Why isn't pe- why aren't people drinking mimosas the moment we get this? Yes. Like, I'm that person. I want to have a good time, but I still, in a way, I keep aware of like my friends and their drinking because I don't think anybody else is going to stay aware of like our group. Like if men come in and I'm like, okay, let's start drinking some waters. Let's let's chase these with something other than sugary things because I don't want people to get so wasted to where they get taken advantage of. But at the same time, like oh yes, I I know how to have a really good time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that. Who want to see me and Samara out on a night on a town? We want to make that happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm with it. That'd be fun. Give us a sober Samara moment versus a tipsy Samara. Um, sober Samara would be like. How do we know Samara tipsy? You know Samara is tipsy when I start dancing in the club. Okay. Like, I'll start dancing. I'll start, like, do you want to drink? Do you want to drink? Like, let's have fun. Like, <laughs> oh, my God, girl, you're so pretty. Like, I'm that, like, overly nice person in the club. Like, it's not fake. It's just, like, I think my comfortability coming out more. So I'll start yeah. being, like, very friendly. Like, make sure everyone's having a good time. That's how you know, like, I'm drunk. Like, it's not dangerous for you to be like, okay, she's not saying, like, did you say excuse me? But it's like, okay, she's trying to bring people we don't know into the circle right now to drink. All this yeah. bottles, let's, like, cut her off more so. Facts. Okay, do you, are you always a safe driver? Oh, yes. I always make sure either I have, like, a certain limit or we have an Uber ready or someone in our group is like, okay, I'm not drinking after a certain time so they can start drinking water. But I'm really big into the whole safe driving, no drinking and driving. I lost someone to a drinking and driving incident before. Oh, so shit. It just, like, hits me a little different. Just working in the yeah, club definitely. atmosphere. I think I've seen a lot of people get into accidents after the club, even though, like, if it wasn't, like, crazy. Yeah. And just as a bartender mindset, I know that, like, it's our responsibility kind of, like, when the person leaves. So I'm just really big into, like, if we have means and methods of being safe, like, why not take it? Why are you putting your life at risk, making your family be sad in someone else's life? So I'm all pro. If you cannot drive, toss them keys. Yeah. I'd rather you max out your bank account to call Uber home, but it's a lot that can go on with, like, drunk driving. So I'm, like, pro safe driving. Oh, I still ain't learned my lesson yet, child. Girl. I gotta stop. I'll be on the road. I'll be on the wheel like this. Uh uh-uh. uh. See, in we'll my bartending days, I was. I was. In my mid twenties, I thought I was invincible because I was like, I was like, oh, I only had a couple shots. I can, I can do this. And then one time, when I was going to All Star Weekend, I got pulled over right before my flight leaving the club, and I got a um, 
they did the field sobriety test and yeah. everything. And the cop was honestly, he was pissed because I was passing it. Like, I was, I was drunk. But I think the fact that I knew how to handle myself under those, like, conditions, yeah. like, he was, he, could, he didn't give me a summons or nothing. So I was like, okay, like, let me go catch this flight to L.A. now and go to All-Star. Yeah, Weekend, it's fine. But after that, I was like, okay, I need to be more aware because I'm not as safe as I thought it was. Oh, girl. <laughs> that kind of scared me. So I'm going to have to. All right, so with us being strip club bartender vets, yeah. how did you feel about the $1 tippers? Trying to shoot thirty damn shots. Oh, they don't America, get I know you them. had them. They get their drink. They tip a dollar. It might be the only drink you get the rest of the night. It's I can't believe drink. people really do this yeah. and think we're about to like cater to And then they you. ask for like more drinks or like a heavy hand. I'm like, this is your third drink for a dollar. A dollar. Okay, you're about to get a juice cup next time. A That's joke. What you're about to get. Yeah, they don't get seen again. <laughs> I'm like, what planet are they on? Not this planet. Tipping a all. dollar, uh-uh. girl. All right, give me the worst pickup line you ever gotten. Um, I don't know. Like people have said, <laughs> people have said like corny stuff in the DMs before, but nothing is standing out to the point where I'm like, oh, that was like memorable. But yeah, I can't, I can't really think of any corny pickup yeah. lines anyone's tried with me before. I feel like they're all corny. They, that's that's probably why they probably are all corny to me. I don't so know they're which all the corny is. So, what was the worst part about working at a strip club, and what was considered the best part for you? The worst part about working at a strip club was that people always thought I was a stripper. Like, all they always thought, or they were trying to convince me to change over from being a bartender to a stripper. Yeah, that's the one. And I'm just like, I get some girls falling, not the trap, but I get some girls go that route and end up that way on, on that side, but I'm like, I had a goal that I wanted to reach, and it kind of also trickles into the best side, because... As a bartender, honestly, because we counted out a lot of girls' money, I was making more money than some of the dancers. So yep. That's, that's, that was the best part. I knew that I didn't have to work three times as hard, be having to convince some man to give me whatever change he had. All I had to do was pour a drink and smile and say that's thank it. you. And I can make $10. And walk around. Drink. Yes, and walk around. I had to be nice. And I'm a, I'm a friendly person. And at my bar at that time, I was the only brown-skinned girl. Like, it was all light-skinned girls, yeah. one white girl. So I already had a little bit of something going for myself, and I played that. I was like, oh, I'm the pretty brown skin girl. I'm friendly. Everyone else was kind of like mean. Not mean, but they had like that wall up because they knew what these men were here for and stuff yeah. like that. So I was like, I'm going to be the bubbly fun one, and people will come out to see the bartender. So I'm like, I'm going to profit off of people wanting to see us and make sure like I create a following or community that strictly just want to come and get drinks from me. Like They might tip the strippers, but they're coming because I'm working on a Thursday. Right. Night. Like, I'm telling you. That was the you. best part. I love making, I love making the fast money. <laughs> the bartenders are where it's at. It I'm is, telling you. Is. Oh, my God. So, we worked at two totally different strip clubs. Samara so worked at that bounce that ass strip club. I worked at the kind of bottoms up <laughs> kind of country strip club. So, can you tell me what was the most ratchet incident you ever witnessed? Oh, it could either be a toss-up between who came. It was Seven Streeter and French Montana came on like a random like Wednesday or Tuesday because there was a concert in town and they weren't like scheduled to come into the club. Yeah. But they were like throwing money and it was like Roach City. Like the girls act as if they never seen a dollar. So I was more embarrassed for them. <laughs> um, and then what was the second part? Of, what was the other part of the question? What was the, yeah, the most ratchet incident you ever witnessed? So it was either that or there was like a big fight in the club to where like it was two rival gangs. And we had a pool table in our club, and, like, guys were taking pool sticks, cracking them over their knees, and, like, stabbing people. No way! To the point where we had, like, caution tape around our bar. We couldn't leave the bar until, like, 5 a.m. because we had to get questioned. They had to, like, clean the crime scene. So that was probably ratchet also. Samara, yeah, right. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that's mm-hmm. the one. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. But I love me some Baltimore. I love I, know, I know you do. <laughs> All right, I have to ask you, if you had to pick between an NFL player, NBA player, and a rapper, which one would you pick to date? Can we, like, sink under the water? <laughs> um, um, they're all the same. I'm about to say, I feel like they're, they're all, all the, cheap. They're, yeah, they're all in the same category. So, to me, at this day and time, at this very second that we're talking, I'll say basketball. Basketball. Yes, I'll say basketball. I would, too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I feel like they do all cheap. Yeah, to me it's kinda all the same category. 
All right, back to the strip club. Okay. Did all the dancers like fuck with you, or were there like a hater and a bunch like? Mm-hmm. Um, like oh, damn hater. Majority of them, we we got along for the most okay. part. I got in one incident with one dancer. She was like a little older, and we actually like fist fought to the point where like my manager at the time had to pull me in the office and was like, "Hey, do you want to have her fire suspended, terminated?" And I was like. At the end of the day, like, we're all women. I knew she had, like, a family to feed and stuff like that. So I was like, I don't want to see her, like, get suspended. But, like, maybe two days off. But, yeah, I would say that was the only incident. I had a really bad fight. But everyone else, I still talk to some of the dancers now. Like, when I go back into town and I go to the club, they're like, oh, you working tonight? Are you here? Are you here? If I'm with, like, guys with money, I'm like, oh, we're coming through tonight. Like, are you working? So there's still a few of them that I'm very close to that I still talk to, like, throughout the month and stuff like that when I'm in town. But only a handful, I would say, like, didn't like me. That's simple fact because, like, we were just making more money, I think. Right. <laughs> At what age do you think, do you think there's a cutoff age to stop bartending? Especially, like, Ooh. in the environment that we're used to? Yeah. So, I always said, I think, between 30 and 35 mm-hmm. should be that cutoff because, in my head, that was my goal. Me and my friends that were kind of in the bar, in the bar scene, I always said I didn't want to be in there past 30. Yeah. Even though I had some girls who worked at the bar with me who were like, mid 30s pressing 40 i'm like if that works for you that works for you but for me i knew that the money was a little too quick for me that it wasn't longevity money and i was trying to have a relationship and i knew me working at the bar for the seven eight year time span i was was always an issue and topic of discussion in my relationships even though the men knew i was at the bar previously to them like meeting me like i was already working and that was always an issue but yeah my cutoff i think I think 30, because there's always someone turning 18 literally every day coming up behind you. So in your head, it's a competition. Whether you admit it or not, you're competing yeah. with these young girls coming up in the club who are getting BBLs, lipo, um, injections, all this stuff that is advancing. It's like you either got to keep up, sell your soul, or call it quits. And it's like you have to know when to gracefully bow out and mm-hmm. know like your time is at an end. You made the money you could. Yeah. Now it's a new generation because if not, you're going to constantly be doing like a keep up with these young girls that are turning 18 every day and that was always at the forefront that I'm like I came in here when I was 18 and I was the hottest bitch at that time and girls didn't like me and then four years later we had a new girl come and I was like oh everyone's eyes are on her now let me try and stack up money because in another four years there may be a new girl hiring or auditioning for this spot so you have to know like when your time's up and some people I don't think can accept when their time's up in this industry per se because the money is always good whether you want to admit it or not and some people get stuck in that fast money round but yeah i think there should be a cutoff for being a bartender yeah definitely were you ever in a relationship where there was like a big problem that you worked at a strip club like did you think oh you're leaving home with these people they're tipping all this money like um, or were they like cool? Like, oh, she's she's bartending. She's making her money. There was probably like one relationship. Yeah, my other relationship when I was in the strip club, he actually was security, so he was okay. there at the same time. But there were still times when he wasn't working, and I would be like, oh, I'm going to the hookah bar after with the rest of the bartenders for the yeah. after hours. He'd be like, um, no, you're not bringing your ass home. Like, bring home. Like, I'm like, um, I'm still going out. I'll see you in a little bit. But um, overall, I think majority of my relationships that I had when I was in the strip club understood like I was there for the money. I didn't really care about anything else. I was strictly business when I was doing my, uh, like, bartending services. And even if we, like, went out with customers, I kept it professional. I was like, I'm here because the club. Um, I'm here because you're a loyal client. A cu- yeah. I'm sorry, a customer. And I know you're going to continuously come back. So as a group, we would go out as, like, partiers and stuff like that. But, yeah, there were only probably maybe one or two relationships that were, like, tripping and didn't understand me wanting to work at a strip club. But they were benefiting off of me working at a strip club. Right. Okay, one more question before we go to commercial. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like when dating, like, there's a cutoff time that you should be out? Um, no. I think that comes with, like, just trusting your partner. Yeah. Because if I'm out at a club for my friend's birthday, I don't want my man being like, oh, it's 2 o'clock, the club's closed. If like, I'm like, oh, we're going to the Waffle House, I want you to trust me enough to be like, yeah. okay, like, you're going out to eat. It's no, like, funny stuff going on. But that's a big trusting, I think, that comes into that. Like, no one should tell you when you have to come in. You should either be willingly, okay, I know it's a respectful hour. I'm trying to respect that. Mm-hmm. But, like, you're not about to tell me, oh, you need to be home by 2 o'clock. No, you're about to really make me be out to, like, 5. Yeah. <laughs> I get that. Like, I'm like, but, okay. Right, but why? <laughs> what do you got to do when I come home? You're about to fall asleep, and I'm still ready to keep going. Right. <laughs> All right, y'all. Man, this interview getting good. I'm sorry. I'm losing track of time. I'm just in there like, 
This is good. We'll be right back. We're going to play a game. We're going to play Who Smoke, going to outsmoke Who Smoke. So we'll be right back. Red Soul Wines by Amberella comes in a variety of flavors. Freshly crafted and guaranteed to bring out your sexy. Now back to the show. All right, and we are back. It is time to play. Not even play. We're going to get into who smoke, going to outsmoke who smoke. So me and Samara are going to smoke our hookah, and we're going to get into the celebrity beat between Diddy and Cassie. <laughs> <laughs> like... We've been hearing stuff. We've been hearing stuff for years. It just took for someone to, yeah. to really like put her foot down. And she put the foot down. But Samir, why did it take all these why do women wait all these years? That's the part I don't understand. Um maybe she had to like get comfortable enough, like, or feel secure enough, maybe. That's the only part I could figure out. Or because maybe when she was in it, like I've yeah. been in like a DV situation. Like when you're in it it's scarier to like put your foot down then because you're still around that person so i think it took for her to like establish a relationship with the guy she, with her husband have right. a family kind of find like a sense of peace and then she was like oh, i'm going after this man literally because yeah. it like i'm like wow 30 mil and then i was like who is this even true but then i was like it gotta be true because he settled in he a settled day in a day and that's i think that i think that says more words than anything because to me, when you settle, that means you're just trying not to make it go any further than yes. what it is and have people dig deeper. And to me, that made him look a little guilty. It made him look a little guilty. Like, he wanted her to shut up and not say nothing more. Yeah. And now we're, like, with a third woman now trying to say he's sexually assaulted them. And now the bad boy president is being accused. And that whole, uh, <laughs> there's, a certain, there's a certain tax bracket of money, like, where I always was like, you're untouchable. Like, the Jeff Bezos, the yeah. Diddy's. The guy um, who got, uh, he had, like, the little sting of women. He killed himself in jail. Like, Epstein. Like, it's a certain peer and tiller, or tier, sorry, that you have of money where, like, you own the cops. You own the government. It's like, yep. you can make moves. And I feel like Diddy had that for a little while. And that's why no one said nothing. Yeah. And then, like, to know, you know, he had the cop friends and all that who hid all this information. But, and then the NDA is out now that Cassie can't even put out her book. Mm -hmm. Like! And he, and he was making his artists who wanted to get their royalties sign an NDA. So it's like, you can get this money, but you can't say anything that happened during the time when I was, like, managing you or over your record label and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Like, mm. Did you see the clip? Did you see the clip when Cassie, they were interviewing both of them together. They were on a carpet. And Diddy looked so... the interviewer... Oh my but God! Was, but, the like, what you say? but the interviewer was Andre Leon Talley, who is a gay man. Well, he what, he passed away. He was a gay man in the fashion industry. So it's like, why do you feel as though you're right. like you're intimidated by what this man is about to say, as if he's about to just like discourage you or discredit you on this red carpet? Like that's an insecurity. I felt like he was already like on edge. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Oh my God. But then I heard. That yeah. Kim Porter, when she was like working on her book before she passed, that she had a lot of tea that she was about to kind of steep out in her book to let the public know. And I think that's why they said they said her first autopsy was poisoning, and the second one was like pneumonia. They said yes, and I was like, was that an inside? Was that an inside? And you know, Kamorley Simmons is on fire right mm -hmm. now with this whole Cassie thing. I don't know. I, I, just, I just feel like I feel like he may be he may be guilty of what she was going to say because of that settlement like in less than 24 hours and I, and then i don't i know i didn't see what the settlement amount was but i'm assuming it was it had to be pretty close to what she was asking for for it to be so quickly done i'm telling you delivered. it was so quick they said it was the quickest in like rap history that uh, settlement <laughs> i bet i bet because she she was with him for a long time a yeah. long time and then how do you feel about the white polish thing and then she was like and then now Carisha, they're like, oh, well, she wears white nail polish. I noticed that. I, I, I peeped that, like, portion of the interview, and then I was, like, catching all, like, the little pictures people were putting up and, like, the yeah. TikToks and stuff. And I was like, it could be, like, his little, how he wants to brand his girls or whatever the case may be. And Carisha may be going through the same thing, and maybe she's just like, I'm here for the ride. I don't really care. I'm fun. I'm having I don't think she cares life. at all. Yeah. She gets Chanel bags every other day. She got the bag. Like, what? Or she's, 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 on the, she's on the fun roller coaster right yeah, now. Yeah, she is. <laughs> oh my gosh, sir. Okay, if you were in Cassie's shoes, would you wait this long? Do you think you would wait this long? 
Um, I think it depends on, like, if I felt comfortable enough. I think she needed to have, like, enough of her ducks in a row to feel that if it went to court that she had enough evidence more so to back up her story. And maybe it took her this long. Um, but I, I think her timing is fine. I don't think it's ever, like, too, too... I mean, some some cases, like, some of these Bill Cosby cases, I think, are, like, extremely too late. Like, anything past, like, kind of, like, 10 years, I think, is a long time. But yeah. everyone... To each his own. But I think she had to come to a sense of, like, peace and acceptance. And I think her husband was able to, like, give her that sense of peace and acceptance and love that she was, like, longing for that Diddy clearly wasn't giving her. Mm-hmm. Dang, I'm sick about this. I didn't want to believe this at all, right. but I'm like, okay, he's selling in the day. He wanted her to shut up, basically. I wonder how much the settlement was for. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think it was for more than the 30 more? mil. It might have been. I don't know. I'm, I want to I wanna look and see with that if they're going to release that number or not. But also, it's like, now because of the Diddy thing, I think more women are about to start trickling out with allegations of what may yeah. have happened. You see the Jamie Foxx. I saw that. That's why I, that's ah! why I just said that. It's like now women are this really crazy. coming out to speak either their truth or come with some type of bang to get a buck. I don't know. But that's what the, what's difficult about the whole like domestic violence years going by situation. You don't know if people are in it for like a money gain or if they're truly like at peace to know where they can come after their attacker, victimize yeah. a person like that. Oh my God. Huh, guys, you know I had to speak on this. It's everywhere. Sexual assault accusations are coming up out the work. So I had to talk on this. But this this stressing me out. So we got to get into our cocktail creation. Guys, Samara is not new to the cocktail world indeed, okay? So we're going to play your favorite game, Garnish or Tarnish. Samara is an espresso martini chick. So she is going to create her own signature espresso martini. As you guys already know, I'm going to give her a list of ingredients, and the one she chooses is going to go into her signature cocktail. So, ready to play? Yes. All right, so number one, vodka or tequila? I'm a tequila girl. Tequila. Kahlua or Bailey's? Bailey's. Okay. You a Dunkin' or a Starbucks girl for espresso? Starbucks. Starbucks ties me too. And to sweeten it up a little bit, Caramel or simple syrup? Um, I'm going to say since it's the holidays, I'm going to go with caramel. All right, guys. This is sounding real good. <laughs> I have never had tequila in my special martini, so we're about to see what this is about to taste like. So we'll be right back when we shut the bar. This episode of Amber Rouse World features Lunazul Reposado tequila. Every occasion deserves a cheers with this tequila in the room. Now back to the show. And we are back. We have some Mary's ingredients to make her signature espresso martini. So we're going to get started. All right, Samara, so we have your tequila, your Bailey's, your caramel syrup, and your shot of Starbucks espresso. All right, and Samara's not new to this. <laughs> She's right, indeed up on her saying, cocktail game. Right here, so I was like, should I use this or should I like freak I don't have to um, walk her through this like I do my other guests. <laughs> So we have our tequila. Tequila. While she's pouring, you guys already know it's time to put me in the hot seat. So Samara, this is the time you get to ask me anything you want to ask me since I've grilled you this whole interview. Okay. <laughs> um, I think I have more of a question from like a content standpoint. Yeah. What has been your favorite red carpet to like attend? Um, and why? Okay. I would have to say, oh my God, which one? I would probably have to say the BT Awards. Okay. Um, probably because we were celebrating 50 years. Okay, was that that this most recent one? That was the Hip Hop Awards. Okay. So the BT Awards was right before the yeah the BC was right before the hip hop awards in June okay yeah um oh my god it was just so much fun they're usually so stressful and this is a time that I'm just like okay we can relax we we got this and yeah <laughs> I met so many people so many connects it was great oh, that was good I was about to say every time I see you post I'm always like oh my gosh she's on the red carpet getting more content <laughs> I'm like it's I know a lot of people try to do what you're doing so i also commend you on everything because you've been on this for a while it's not like something you just picked up inside of thank you thank you my girl on this you journey. too i'm like yo i gotta get content created samara on this show because her content is crazy 
I'm gonna do a fancy little drizzle. Instead of yes, I know you it. are. <laughs> do a little, a little rimming. Yes, looks beautiful. <laughs> Let's taste it. Goodness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It looks pretty. Yes, and this is the first time, guys, I've ever had tequila and my espresso martinis. I'm going to tell you that. It's the only way to do it. It's the only way. Oh, my gosh. All right, Samira, so you got to name it. It's banging. So what are we going to do? It's different. Um, it's banging. What? Let's call it the, I don't know. You can name it. Can no. Why are you always trying to switch the script on me? <laughs> Oh my gosh. What is this one we called? Tequila. With espresso. It could be like a good morning, a good morning drink or something. I don't know. This is the. <laughs> what are we going to call this? It could be the caramel. Your name got to be in it. Okay. The Samara. Espresso wake up. Not nah, it's the oh, ghetto no. Samara <laughs> espresso martini. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll take that. She put the twist on it, guys. All right, so thanks for tuning in. This is episode nine, guys. Can you believe it? We got one more to be in the season. Thank you for tuning in, Samara. Thank you so much yes, for being course, here and freezing your ass off with me and drinking with me and being in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, make sure you check this out. Share our episode. We'll see you next time. We want some. We want some. We want some.